This is exactly right. Welcome to the mini-sode. It's where we read your stuff back to you. Sometimes it's hometown murders. Lately, it's not. Of my favorite murder. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. This is how we do it. Um, This is how um, we do it. So we are in, going to be in New York and Brooklyn, or Manhattan and Brooklyn and Boston-ish for a tour. So here's some hometowns from there. Thank you, Georgia. Take it away. Um... This one made me laugh so hard. Okay. The subject line is, my husband found a hand in the Gowanus Canal on the 4th of July. <laughs> Love it already. In parentheses, lighthearted. <laughs> Love that. Dear MFM family, a few years ago, my husband and I were visiting friends in Brooklyn for the 4th of July. As my husband and his friend were walking over the Gowanus Canal on their way to get groceries, his friend started telling him about the cesspool that is the Gowanus Canal. I don't even know it. Uh, our friend explained that it was the most polluted waterway mm. in the country with numerous instances <laughs> of waste, raw sewage, and human bodies being dumped Holy in the canal. Shit. As they got about halfway across, my husband, uh, an internal medicine doctor, Doctor, that seems made up um <laughs> said dude is that a hand oh my god they looked down and into the bubbling yes bubbling water Ew. and they saw the fingertips <gasps> from a hand bobbing in the water looking like it was trying to climb out oh my god being the calm men that they were they started freaking the fuck out and calling all the authorities they could think of 911 fire department <laughs> local police precinct yes. coast guard being that it was the 4th of July by the time the numerous authorities arrived quite a crowd had gathered <gasps> the various departments roped off everything and then <laughs> Consulted with my husband and his friend and each other. Uh, then the one who clearly was in charge, I picture him as Andy Sipowitz, said, yep, we got a hand right there. And then he turned to the department rookie, patted him on the back oh. and said, you, my friend, are suiting up. <gasps> the rookie got into his wetsuit and slowly made his way into the canal, clearly not happy to be swimming in the water that had gonorrhea in it. Yeah. He swam for a bit, using a pole to try and retrieve the body. After a few minutes of poking and pulling, a mannequin arm shoots 20 feet in the air. All the officers groan and start to head on to more urgent crimes. Sipowitz pats my husband on the back and says, don't worry about it. We had nothing to do today anyway. The next day, we found the rest of our Vic at the Brooklyn Flea Market, where someone was selling a mannequin that was missing one arm. Picture attached. (gasps) Steven was fucking with um, his his thing, meaning I I knew we had a photo, but before I knew it was a mannequin, and I was like, I don't want to see a hand in a fucking (laughs) thing. (laughs) Look at those two hot bitches holding that hand. Um... Oh, yeah. Hi, Hi guys. Good job. Um, I fully realize I'm throwing my husband under the bus with this story, <laughs> but that's what you get when you think you found a dead body and you don't call your murderina wife to come and watch. <laughs> that's right. That's hilarious. Stay sexy and don't go swimming in the Gowanus Canal, Melissa. Oh, my gosh. Let's Love go that. swimming in the Gowanus Canal this weekend. <laughs> um, that's amazing. That's a good one. Okay. This one's fa- called NYC found in wall slash murder closet. Yes. It says, this is how she opens it. You guys. <laughs> That's great. All right. You guys. Back in February of this year, I made some big girl moves and bought an apartment. It was, it is tiny. It's built in the 1950s, hadn't been renovated since the late 1970s. Well, that sounds amazing. When I bought it, my family would joke either one of the previous owners had bodies hidden in the walls or it was used as a shoot, it was used to shoot porn. Oh. They had covered all the walls in brick paneling, oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> random floor tile, wood paneling, and awful wallpaper, and it also covered it, cov- covered the near perfect wood floors in beige carpeting yes needless to say it needed a ton of work while working on uh, renovations in the apartment one weekend my mother and i had gotten to work on the hall closets that had been lined with brick themed contact paper <laughs> yeah, i've seen that shit floored with parquet linoleum yes no joke my fucking style what's parquet mean i think it's just shitty plasticky that uh like you know like it's like t- it's like tiles but it's like plastic tiles oh, yes 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 so it looks like tiles okay got it but it's not tiles um 
As I pulled some of the linoleum up in the closet, <laughs> it's hard to say, I was working and I saw something small and silver roll out from under the molding wall and into the middle of the closet. At first, I thought nothing of it and, and went to, to keep peeling, but then shortly realized, all caps, it's a goddamn bullet casing that had just rolled out of my apartment wall. Oh, fuck. Of course, I picked it up right away. And then she writes, but why? <laughs> <laughs> to show my mother. And she just said, huh, that's weird. Throw it in the garbage. I don't know why she's from Wisconsin <laughs> or something. And continued peeling the linoleum from her closet. I almost took her advice, but then noticed the big brown slash red stain on the floor where the bullet had rolled earlier. My mother still could not care less, so I took a picture to, uh, to send to everyone I knew and asked their advice. They all said I should call the police, not involve the super in case he was involved, and sell the apartment immediately since it was probably haunted. In the end, I did not tell the super. I did not sell the apartment, but I left a non-emergency voicemail at my local local NYPD precinct. They never called me back, but then I had a friend with a hookup look up my address and said there had been no crimes reported for my apartment during the past 10 years, and the stain in the picture I had sent them probably wasn't blood. Yeah, right. Uh I'm not 100% sure I believe them, but I haven't been able to find any proof that something violent did happen in my tiny apartment, and I have lovingly named the ghost who mysteriously moved a can of coconut oil across my kitchen counter, Salvatore. Uh, oh, shit. I still have the bullet, and people have suggested making either a nice wall plaque for it or to make it make a piece of jewelry. I can't wait to see you guys in Brooklyn on the 5th. Love you all. SSDGM and stay out of the murder closet. Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, you've made a terrible error. <laughs> I can't believe, first of all, saying there's no overt evidence of something violent happening, but, and yet you already named that there's 17 layers of shit wallpaper and paneling and, <laughs> and stuff all over the walls. Like, how would you know until you pull some stuff down? Here's the thing. If there's still a blood stain in a shell casing, that means they never uh, told the cops about the violent, crazy thing that happened there. It yes. does, you know what I mean? Like, there of would course be no report. There is no record of it no, because they put secret. vinyl fucking siding on it. It's a know. closet secret. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Move out. I um, bet you could sell it for so much more now. But you know what's very funny about both of those stories is like the the NYC police are just like, you know that it, they that call yeah. comes and they're just like, yeah, delete. You like, know, every morning they get in, there's 500 voicemails. Men's. And some of yeah. them are just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I like this one. It's the subject line is murders and treasure. Cute. Dear Karen, Georgia, and Stephen, I've lived in Greenpoint, Brooklyn for 30 years. Oh, shit. It's been, it's always been pretty safe. The worst things ever to happen here are usually accidents with the exceptions um being homeless guys getting attacked Aww. and one guy being found buried under a pile of Christmas trees and leaves what? with an eye missing <gasps> one year. That's horrifying. Jesus. Um, I did find lots of treasure though, since the neighborhood is so old. Apparently, um, even the entirety of McGinnis Boulevard, which connects us to Manhattan and downtown Brooklyn, was once a row of houses that were demolished and just built over. <gasps> so all of the basements are still intact <gasps> under the roads. Mm -hmm. Thousands of rats would live down there for decades and eventually started hanging out in the trees in the park by my house at night. Oh, God, can you, rat trees. Rat trees. Like dude. rat trees. Rat trees. Treat, you're just strolling along, whistling, because you're always whistling in the park at night, and then boom, there's a rat just hits your shoulder. I don't want rats to live in trees. I mean, it's just a reality that we have to face as new New, new Yorkers. <laughs> People finally wanted to get rid of them um, once they started showing up in the park. I forget how, but they finally got rid of them somehow in the 30s. <laughs> bet it wasn't clean. I bet it wasn't a good one. I bet it had to do with bats uh, that had nails taped to the end yeah, of the bat. I bet it was a blood mafia hit yeah i also found massive trash bags full of misty brand cigarettes and a chain link enclosure in the park when i was 11 or 12 nice. years old fine maybe it was a drop-off i still have no idea but my friend and i each dragged an entire trash bag through the park into the playground and presented our discoveries <laughs> to our parents my mother <laughs> scolded us and told me to put it back oh my god my friend's mom yelled at him to quickly fetch his brother and they promptly left the park for two weeks b with both bags in their possession. Holy shit. 
like, get those cigarettes, get them down into the basement. Get them, your uncles will sell these. <laughs> I found an old sword once. I used it as a baseball wow. bat. <laughs> I used it as a baseball bat to strike a volleyball and the blade flew off the hilt and whizzed right by my past my friend's face. Oh my God. Nothing found in any walls, but my fire escape does have a sign that reads, anyone placing an encumbrance shall be fined $10. <laughs> Very cute. And the original hallway door said, no beggars or peddlers allowed yes. until it was replaced a week ago. Aww. Not sure if any of these stories are interesting enough, but I'm a big fan and MFM is the one podcast I replay over and over once I've listened to everything that week. Oh. Michael. Michael, what a great... No, that's exactly the kind of story we want. I thought bags of cigarettes? Bags of cigarettes. Sign me up. Dude. I love it. Where, what... All of it. I want to know everything. Um, also, I want to, I wonder if this, I am fascinated. There was a neighborhood and I don't know where I was. I just know that it was 6 a.m. one morning and I was on my way to the airport. I've mm -hmm. probably told you the story already, but I was on my way to O'Hare and the cab driver didn't want to get on the freeway. I'm sure it was Monday morning or mm -hmm. Sunday morning. So he was trying to avoid, avoid the traffic. So he took surface streets a lot of the way there. They do that. It's, you see the coolest fucking houses. You see the coolest neighborhoods and at one point we drove down the street and i was looking up the side streets mm -hmm. and as i was looking and the and the neighborhood was getting kind of worse and worse yeah. and the houses were getting more run down it mm -hmm. looked um some of these streets looked maybe abandoned or yeah we did i couldn't tell what was going on and as we passed one street a pack of like 30 <gasps> stray dogs no came around the corner and was running up the street and it was, but it was like a five second movie like i saw it and then we were past it and it, the view was blocked man new york's the coolest fucking place it's the coolest fucking place you can go though i just even the houses are i just from every time that happens to me i'm just like staring out the window because it's so new york yes it's like exactly what you picture new york to be like as a kid yeah and it's exactly what it's like it's the funniest thing is california is so you know comparatively really spread out and like like houses are and very new. Everything's new. Everything's new. It's separate. It's set away from the road. New York, you walk down the street and can look into people's yeah. apartment windows. Yeah. It's my favorite. It's the best. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the name of this one. Okay. Uh, hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and Pets. First off, love you all and love the podcast and the mental health work you do. Thank you. Um, recently, I was having dinner with my parents and I was talking about my obsession with true crime. My mom blurted out, haven't you heard about the time your dad slept in blanks bed mm. i'm not gonna tell you what okay now my dad is a small town military republican insert eye roll here man <laughs> so you can only imagine the look on my face when she said this my dad explained that in the early 80s he was stationed in germany working as a medic for the u.s army when he got to his bunk his bunk mate started to tell him about how weird the guy was that used to stay in that bed the overall vibe was that the guy was a complete weirdo and let's just say no one was sad that he moved out a few years later my dad comes home and with comes home and him and mom get married. One day he was watching the news and he sees a familiar face. One of the commanders he worked with in Germany talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh. Turns out my dad replaced Jeffrey Dahmer as the medic when he was discharged and took over his bunk. Oh, no. Can you fucking believe that? <laughs> Wish I was going to see you in Medford, but unfortunately my sister bought tickets for her and her friend and didn't include me before Ooh. you sold out. Sisters, am I right? SSDGM, Mel. Oh my God. That's so good. That's, I mean, first of all, I was trying to guess and I thought it was going to be the guy that, um, in Chicago that Richard Speck that killed oh, all, all right. those nurse, nursing students. Um, but this is the eighties. So he, then did he, when did he kill people? He went home and killed people after this. Yeah. I think it was in the nineties. Yeah. I think it was like 10 years later or so, but just that idea that he that was his bunk too and they were all like the guy that just left was so fucking creepy Ugh. like everyone knew of course they did yeah with america's number one meal kit hello fresh you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door all you have to do is cook and enjoy hello fresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality 
From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Goodbye. All right. The subject line of this is mid nineties. Hello, funny humans slash adorable pets. I grew up in the not so scary suburb of, of Long Island in the mid 1990s. My sister got a college internship working at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Uh, and we took alternating trips down to visit her. My father and then 13 year old brother were away visiting her. And my mother and I, age 16, were home alone for the first time. Mm. To preface, we lived on a block designed with all the same ranch style homes. But in the late 80s, my incredibly talented father spent his evenings building a 700 square foot extension on our home which was which really made it stand out on the block oh, wow. it was targeted for burglaries at least three times <laughs> that i was aware of while we weren't home uh, they typically break in through the sliding glass door um, and one time they broke a window my father was super into the newest technology so the house was always secured with the best alarm services offered at the time and the burglar would normally trip the alarm and bail before getting away with anything the extension was basically one great room which we called the big room Room with huge lovely windows a sliding glass door and huge skylights on the pitched roof it was a dream of natural light during the day <laughs> but uh, left you feeling quite vulnerable at night um so my brother and father had been out of town for a couple days when my mom and i thought it would be a good idea to settle in for the night and watch the movie seven together in no. the big room <gasps> the alarm wasn't set since we were at home and around halfway through the movie there was a strange knock at the door <gasps> can you imagine uh -uh. it had to be around 10 p.m we both looked at each other like this isn't right <laughs> and together walked upstairs to the front door sadly it was one of those doors with no window so mm -hmm. we couldn't see who was on the stoop from the other windows of the house so my mother cracked the door and was greeted by two large middle-aged men mm -hmm. one guy said is your husband home mm -mm. Mm -mm. and my mother very wisely said he's just up picking up our son he'll be right back can i help you with something and they said they'd wait to speak to him and just kind of stood there my mom closed the door locked it ran downstairs to the nearest silent panic button provided by the alarm company and by the time the police got there they were gone what the next day our neighbor who delivered our newspaper came to the door to collect the weekly fee and we told her about the odd visit she asked what they looked like and she said that she had seen them uh, for at least two nights <gasps> sitting in their car on the block while she was delivering the papers at 4 a.m. <gasps> so creepy. They clearly noticed that my father's car had been missing from the driveway for a couple days and were staking out the house for who knows what. Very home alone, if you ask me. Yeah, that's exactly home alone. <laughs> that, that, that was in the email. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so glad my mother, one tough lady born and raised in the Brooklyn projects, mm. had the right instinct to only open the door a crack, lie about his whereabouts, and press that silent panic button. We called the police to relay what our newspaper lady said. They sent a, a patrol car uh, to patrol the block for the next two nights while my father was still out of town. The men never came back, but I could never finish watching that movie. <laughs> And still to this day, haven't seen it all the way through. Oh, it's so good. You have to watch it. Oh, it's, there's a twist. You have to watch it with an armed policeman sitting next That's to you. That's right. Ever since then, I've also had a hard time being in that room alone at night, I bet. And after moving out when I was 20, I've been forced to sleep there on numerous occasions <laughs> while visiting. It just gives me the creeps. SSDGM, set your house alarms and get a front door with a window. Sue's. Yeah, but if you have a window, then they can break it and just un and then open the doorknob. Not if there's bars. That's right. Or a peephole. Something. Uh, yeah. Peepholes are probably better. Peepholes. Peepholes. Let's go peepholes. Peepholes, people. Peepholes, people. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
that's the one and there it is and that's the tagline <laughs> that we end on send us your stories at my favorite murder at gmail any fucking weird cra- ghost we haven't had a lot of good ghost stories lately i, feel I know like. we let's love them some, all let's get some ghost stories let's get some ghost stories going all right um stay sexy and don't get murdered <gasps> goodbye. goodbye elvis do you want a cookie uh.